Howdy, Marcus. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And, uh, New Year. Uh, so you're kind of the Lone Ranger out there all of a sudden. Uh, Rodney's uh, down and Jalen's suddenly on the COVID list. Uh, uh, are you going to be the leader of the safety position this week? And how do you, uh, you know, how do you prepare for that? And, and uh, what are you going to be uh, worried about mostly, I guess? Um, I would say I definitely have to, you know, take a bigger role of just communicating out there. You know, I don't think I have to do anything, you know, outside my box or try to do too much. Um, I still want to just approach every day, you know, the way I always do, give it my all, um, 110%. But, you know, with guys like Rodney and Mills not there, I also understand that, you know, we got a lot of young guys out there, myself included. I mean, it's only my second year. So, you know, we all kind of got to do a better job of just commun over communicating, um, talking to each other out there and make sure making sure we're all on the same page. Thank you. Go ahead, Ed Bankin and then Martin. Hi, Marcus. You just talked about that communication. How much of a challenge is that not having the Rodney McLeods and the Jalen Mills out there to get everything down with the communication part of it. How important will that be as far as you and the young guys getting that down? Yeah, it'll be extremely important. I mean, as a young guy, you know, it's it's all it's not always easy, you know, just coming in, being thrown in there and just, you know, it takes experience, it takes reps, you know, get that comfortability and that confidence. But, you know, I got confidence in all the guys that will be out there. I think this week we've done a really good job of, you know, over communicating in practice, making sure we're talking things through and all getting on the same page. So, you know, we got to continue that um, through practice today and then carry it over to the game on Sunday. Go ahead, Martin, and then Zach. Hey, Marcus. Happy New Year. Um, Happy New what, Year. what kind of opportunity is this for, for you? And, and I assume like a lot of young guys are going to be playing based on, you know, what the injury list looks like. I mean, how important is this for you going forward? Um, you know, making a name for yourself, that type of thing. Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity for, you know, myself and these other young guys that are going to be stepping up. Um, you know, anytime you can go in and get live game reps, you know, it can do a great deal for you. Just gaining that experience, getting that feel of a of an in-game feel. So, you know, I think it'll be a great opportunity for all of us to go out there, you know, put some film out there. And, you know, we want to finish on a high note. You know, we know, we know we're know we not going to the playoffs, but, you know, you find out who really loves football in times like these. So, you know, you want to continue to give it your all every day, no matter what. Go ahead, Zach. Hey, Marcus, Happy New Year. If, if you think back to the summer, uh, you know, you show up at camp and, and the Eagles had obviously they signed Will Parks. They had a fourth round pick in, in Kayvon Wallace, and and you were still a key backup for this team. What did you do? Do you think to, to to get that role and 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 to really be in the situation you're in now? Yeah, I knew. I kind of knew what um what I was sort of up against coming into training camp this year. Um, I really put a lot of a lot of hard work in this off season. You know, that's kind of always been my. You know, just my background, my journey so far, you know, being a walk on those things, I've always been, you know, sort of that overlooked guy, but I've always, you know, worked hard, always believed in myself. So, you know, that's that's kind of how I, you know, continue to stick around is I just, you know, I know what I can do. I have confidence in myself. Um, I know as a young player, it's not always going to be perfect, but I know that I will continue to give my all each and every day and continue to get better and better. So. I'm sorry. I was on, I'm, you, do you think the way you've played this year has has put you in a position to to kind of be in that mix going into next season? Um, you know, I try not to focus too much on on you know the future of you know looking as towards the next season. You know, I try to just stay stay on the here and now. Um, so you know, I'm just trying to you know continue to work, continue to get better. You know, I feel like. I feel like there were some things I could have done a lot better this year, but at the same time, I feel like I did show some good things. So, you know, I'm just focused on, you know, right now, um, finishing this season out strong on Sunday and making sure that, you know, Washington can't uh, put some hats on on our field. So that's where my focus is right now. Are there any more questions for Marcus? Go ahead, Rob. Marcus, you mentioned the uh, no hats. When we did an interview with Alex Singleton, he also said that some of the strength coaches were referring to it as a charity game. In other words, give those hats and those T-shirts to a charity. Is that what you've heard, and is that your approach? 
Yeah, you know, I mean, we know Washington is a really good team, but, you know, like we like we said, kind of been harping on this week, we just don't want, you know, it's a pride thing. We don't want other teams celebrating on our field, celebrating winning the division on our field. So, you know, it's just, it just really comes down to having pride, having heart. We know it's going to be a tough matchup out there because they are a really good team. But, you know, that's kind of how it is every week. I mean, every team is the NFL. Every team is going to be a hard-fought match. So, you know, we just got to bring it this week. Hey, Graylin. Uh, looks like uh, Jalen Mills won't be out there as well as uh, you guys have had a lot of injuries there on the back end. How have you prepared for this upcoming week for the extended period of time? And do you feel as if you're auditioning for a larger role next season? Um, I mean, this week I took it just the same as last week. I'm, pre I'm preparing as, as if my number may be called. I mean, last week the number was called, wasn't expected, but, you know, that's what you got to be prepared for. That's what we get paid to do. So, uh, as far as that, I'm just preparing the same each week. But, um, I mean, the future, I don't know what the future holds. Nobody knows what the future holds. The only thing I can do is just be with my feet at right now in this current moment. Go ahead, Daniel. Hey, Grayland. Uh, with, you know, getting to work behind Jalen and Rodney this year, you know, what were some of the things that you, you learned from them as, as veterans and how did they kind of help your development? Um, playing behind them, it helped a lot. I understood more so about the game, uh, just the understanding of clearing whenever something don't go your way. Um, that was the thing that I just, I, I saw them just stay level, you know what I'm saying? They were surfboard shoulders is one of the terms that we use in our DB room. Um, but I watched them do that even through the adversity. And I feel like that's a that's a big thing that I learned with them, uh, those guys being leaders, just seeing how, to, how they handle those situations. You just said surfboard shoulders? Surfboard shoulders. We, we That's what we do. We put our arms out. We say, hey, stay level. You know, things might go, you know, it might go bad. You never know. They might make a play. They might catch a ball. They might have a touchdown. But it, it, as long as we stay level, you know, who knows what the next play might have. We might get a pick, you know. But you got to be where your feet at. You can't be sullen about that last play that happened. And I feel like I watched those guys, you know, they battled and battled and battled. And, you know, they had their ups. They had their downs. But I watched them continuously stay leveled, at, you know, no matter what. They stayed level. I didn't I ain't, I ain't see them pouting, getting sad. They just kept fighting, kept fighting. I feel like that was big for me to just understand that, hey, somebody might catch a ball. Some, you might miss a tackle. Something might happen. But it's, it's all about how you handle it. What did you learn from it? And that, that was one of the things that I, uh, you know, I could say that I learned from them. All right. Are there any more questions for Graylin? No. All right. Oh, go ahead, Rob. I see you pop up there. Hey, Graylin. Uh, you haven't been around. It's your first year, so you weren't here when this team was successful. And now, obviously, they're having difficulties this year. You're not going to the playoffs. Could you tell that there is some overlapping? Was there coming into the year? Was there some swag? Did this team carry itself like a team that has won a Super Bowl, that's been through the playoffs? And uh, is there that kind of feeling in the locker room and, and how can that go into next year? Um, so with me not, you know, really just being in a Super Bowl champion room, I don't really understand, you know, know what that looks like. I haven't been in a Super Bowl room, but I can, I, I will say that, you know, the guys that I'm around, we all very confident um, in, in, in our work. We understand that we put the hours in, we put the work in. So we, you know, we are very confident uh, I don't. I wouldn't say it's like, oh, we won the Super Bowl before, so we just act like this. I feel like that those guys just know that they work, they work their tail off all off season to have that confidence and their preparation that they didn't put in. Hey, Kayvon, uh, you're wrapping up your uh, rookie season here. Uh, what are some of the lessons you you've learned this season that you feel like you could take into your second season? Number one thing for me was just slowing the game down knowing how to, you know, get lined up faster, see the formation faster, left to right, you know, just getting a feel for the game, getting a feel for offensive coordinators and how they want to play call, just the small things like that, just just getting lined up and, and knowing what to be and, and knowing what to do. Exactly. Go ahead, Martin. Hey, Kayvon. Uh, how far do you think you've come this season? I know you've gotten some playing time the past few weeks, and I imagine you'll pro probably get some on Sunday, like, you know, going back to the beginning of the season to where you are now, how far have you come? I came a long way. Um, like I said, getting lined up faster, seeing the game, just letting it slow down for me. 
knowing how to, you know, be a playmaker in, in this defense that I'm in. Um, it's, it's a lot of similarities from the defense I was used to at Clemson to here and just trying to be, you know, in, in, that, in that role where I can just be a role player, um, a guy that can come in off the bench and, and still contribute and still be there need, when needed and when my number is called. So um, throughout the whole season, just learning how to, to just stay hot, stay ready um, so I don't have to get ready. You never know when your name is going to be called. You never know when your number is going to be called. You know, one game, I just go in there and, and I'm playing the first couple snaps, first couple series in the game when we play, you know, the 49ers. And um, just just things like that where I just, you know, would, would sit or just be patient, play special teams, then go in and, and, and be ready to, to, to make plays and be a playmaker. So just going throughout that process, throughout every single game, just knowing how to stay ready and stay hot. Go ahead, Ed. Go ahead, Ed. Hey, Kayvon. Um, just uh, as far as Jalen Mills goes, um, how, how valuable or how, how helpful has he been uh, in uh, helping you get acclimated to uh, the NFL and to the position of safety? All the guys has been awesome. All the vets that we have here are tremendous leaders. Um, they do a great job of just getting us lined up and making sure we know what to do, where to be. Making sure you know we stand on top of our playbook. Make sure we stand on on time and being early. They're very intentional on just being early and being on time and and just doing all the small things the right way. Sure. Hey Mike, how you doing? Um, what was your takeaway from uh, from the game Sunday? Um, what did you learn from it? What was the film like? Uh -oh. You know, uh, anytime you go out there and you play in a game, it's a lot of learning experiences, regardless if it's a good or a bad game. And, you know, uh, from that game, I learned a lot about myself, learned a lot of uh, things that I need to work on. So, you know, I it's not it's not a bad thing. It's only a bad loss if you don't learn something from the experience. So that's how I just took it. I took it as a, a learning experience, a way for me to, to better my craft for the following years and following games that's coming up. Go ahead, Les, and then Nick. Hey, Michael. Uh, so what did you learn? What what could you have done better to make uh, that uh, less of a problem? Uh, more film study, for sure. Um, have to get in film, uh, learn different uh, the different route trees and, and different schemes that uh, the opposing teams are putting together and what they're trying to attack. You know, just, uh, just football IQ in general, you know, um, things that – that they're showing you, you need to learn how to uh, to read those things instead of just trying to play out every play as a different play. You should read your keys better, you know. And that's what I learned uh, just from watching that film and then watching their previous games. And I was like, okay, they were doing the same things. I just wasn't realizing it. So yeah, just uh, just better film study. And will you be out there again uh, this week? I guess. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thanks. Go ahead, Nick, and then Ed. Hi, Mike. Um, Darius Slay was talking earlier this week that uh, he's uh, that he talked to you about the about uh, the game last week and, and trying to help you out and kind of getting you to shake things off. Uh, what have you learned from him and from anybody else as far as that goes? And uh, uh, it, was that kind of helpful to you? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was very helpful. I'm I'm a confident person either way it goes. So I would I wasn't really dwelling on it. It happens to the best, you know. Everyone has a bad game, or you know they don't. The game doesn't go as how they want. But as far as Slay uh, talking to me about it, yeah, it, it eased my mind uh, just to hear the uh, words of encouragement from him, as well as Vonte, uh, Rogue, you know, Mills. Everyone, everyone was just talking to me, you know, saying that it happens to anyone. Just it's a how it's how you respond. It's how you come back after the next game. You can't just dwell on it because you you could defeat yourself if you just sit there and think about the bad things that happen to you. Go ahead, Ed, and then John. Michael, um, you mentioned the film study. How different is the film study? Um, I mean, I would imagine you're not in a room with the other position players. So is it more mm -hmm. independent type film study that you have to look at this season? Or, or how does that work with the film study this year? Um, Yeah, you, it's a lot of uh, independent uh, work going on. But now I sat down with uh, Rod, Mills, and uh, Slay. And they're teaching me how to watch film, you know, instead of just looking at film, they're teaching me the different things to look at on the film 
and able to, you know, for me to play faster and be able to read my keys faster. So that's that's just the little things that they uh, those guys were able to help me with. Go ahead, John. Hey, Mike. Uh, kind of following up on Slay there, he had mentioned that that he was with Jim early in his career, Jim Swartz, uh, and he got benched in game in a couple games early in his career. Did he mm -hmm. uh, impart any of that uh, aspect of it to you and, and explain sort of how do you get over that hump? Oh yeah, for sure. He he Slade jokingly tell me those stories all the time, but he I know he'd be serious about it. And uh he, he just told me, um, though it's not about what happened now, it's about what happened the next day. Be where your feet are. So it you can't just dwell like like I said previously, he told me don't dwell on this. And it, it happened to me, it it can happen to anyone. And you everyone knows the the star power that Slade has and for him to start his career off the same way, you know, with with bad plays or getting benched, you know, it, it just, it kind of like, it was like a mirror for him to tell me that because he went through the same exact thing. So it was able for, he was able to overcome it. So why, why can't I? Hey Brett, um, I guess it's pretty safe to say that you're the starting left tackle and how do, are you, do you feel ready? Like, you know, what's, what's the process been like for you? Uh, the entire process has been the same as it's been all year. You know, next guy up mentality, the same thing. is take every rep serious, take every day as an opportunity to get better. And going into the game, it's the same exact thing. Go ahead, Ed and then John. Hi, Brett. I, I don't think we spoke to you uh, since you came back to, to the Eagles. Um, how, how did that go? Um, how, did, how did, you know, you land back here in Philadelphia after uh, you were done with the Cardinals there? Uh, I was excited to come back, you know, get with the uh, offensive line here with some great guys to learn behind, whether it be Brooks and uh, Lane, Kelsey. Um, get back in the room with uh, Stout. Uh, you, you understand what the standard is here as well. And, you know, it's the biggest thing is they hold you accountable for every decision you make. And you got to know the game plan. And you got to, again, every rep is important. Hey, if I could just follow up, I mean, you started off here, right? I mean, they brought you in initially to start your career here and then you ended up going to the Arizona um, did that play a factor in your d decision to return uh, when you know when the opportunity came about oh uh, you know I got like 10 days here and you uh, you can definitely feel the energy in this offensive line room it's very serious and again I was claimed off waivers to go to Arizona which was an awesome opportunity there and uh, a, a good football team as you know we played them earlier this season and again after a, a few mishaps in the off season was working with a hamstring. Uh, I was let go there and then claimed off waivers once again. And, you know, it's the same thing every year, no matter where you're at, just keep improving. You know, you never know when your time's going to come. Go ahead, John, and then Zach. Hey, Brett. Uh, remember talking to you when he came in, I guess it was August of 2019. Um, and you had had some time off and really had to gain some weight and get back to where you were before. Just curious how long that process took you when you felt like you were back to yourself. It, it took a while. Uh, I was looking at, again, our strength staff here is unbelievable, and uh, they've kind of, they keep our body comps and all that stuff. And I looked at my weight from uh, last summer, and it was like 275. And uh, this week I was up at uh, 315, still a really good body comp as well. So, uh it, it, it's good kind of getting your mask back on. It helps a lot. And do they still have that part of that DOD policy where you have to serve your commitment? I, I think you were at Arizona State teaching. Did you have to transfer that to something here? Uh, yes, sir. So this offseason, I'll be uh, an, an assistant instructor at uh, Temple University with our RTC program. Uh, right now, they're on holiday block leave until uh, the classes start back up middle of January. And again, I'm excited for that opportunity as well. You know, everything's a, a building opportunity and definitely keeps me grounded in the off season. Go ahead, Zach, and then let's. Hey, Brett, most of the work we've seen from you has been on the right side. Um, is, is, is that where you've been this, is that where you've been this week or are you playing left tackle? Where's it been in practice? Uh, I don't, I don't know if I'm able to disclose any of the personnel stuff, but, uh, I've been able to kind of swing all around doing both left side, whether it be guard and tackle, and uh, the right side as well. Thanks. Go ahead, Les and then Bo. 
Yeah, bro. When did you last start the game? Uh, it's been a while, right? Uh, yes. This is my uh, first start in the NFL. Oh, I know. Yeah, but when would you, when would your last Army start have been? Uh, shoot, 2017 actually at the link as well. I believe it was the snow game against Navy. Wow. Okay. Uh, I guess you can't really know if you're ready, but how do you feel about it? Do you, do you think you're ready to start an NFL game? Have you, you know, is there anything that, uh, you were able to do this week that made you feel more ready? I mean, I've had to be ready all season, you know, you've seen the kind of season it's been, everyone's getting banged up and, and Stout always talks about how it's the next man up and you've got to be ready for your time to come. I've gotten a few reps, whether it be with against the Ravens or last week as well. Uh, I always do like the special teams reps as well, just because it, you get that feel of getting on the field and kind of taking contact and making that hit and knowing that you belong out there. It's, it's, I'm just ready for the opportunity, you know. It's going to be exciting. Thanks. Go ahead, Bo. Go ahead. Right along the lines of, um, you know, seeing like how your, your strength numbers compared to when you were here the first time, what was your uh, reunion with, with Stoutland like? You know, did he notice big changes in you since the past couple of years? Uh, he was excited. You know, he sees me as a moldable guy and he definitely likes trying to make me get flustered. But he just I guess it's the background as well with the Army. I'm a guy that you tell me what to do, I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it 100%. And he likes the effort. Kind of, he calls me a little crazy every once in a while, but you kind of have to have that in you to be in this profession. What is what is crazy about you? I'm intense. You know, it's it's the army in me. You get told what to do, and you get it done. All right, we'll take two more here with Rube and then Dave. Hey, Brett. Um, obviously, you guys ran the ball like 97 percent of the time in school. Um, how much of a process has it been learning to pass block and, and how is that part of your game uh, developed? It, again, it's learning a whole new thing. You know, it's a whole different style and uh, that's the most important part. You can't take any days off, whether it be one-on-ones, doing games and team reps. Uh, you got to take everything serious and luckily we have a bunch of guys here that go 100% in practice as well. So it gives you, you know how crucial every rep is. You take everything serious. You go to the meetings, and you got to be a harsh critic on yourself. And the next day you go out there, it's all over again. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, Brett, you uh, you talked about being a moldable guy. Um, I think a lot of people still view you as kind of a project player. Um, seeing what this team's been able to do with a guy like Jordan Mailata, kind of building him up from square one, does that give you confidence that they can kind of make you that type of player too? Absolutely. You know, Jordan's a good friend of mine and seeing his progression as well and just seeing how genuine of a guy he is, how serious he takes his job. Uh, he takes everything personal, you know. It's it's a part of him. He's 100% invested. And the same thing for me, whether it be five years down the line, I establish myself as a starter, you still got to be critical of yourself and you still got to take every day as an opportunity to get better. Hey, Travis, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, Yes, I wanted to ask you, uh, this has to be one of the strangest seasons any receivers ever had. Uh, what do you make of it for yourself? Uh, what happened? How did you have that incredible burst of productivity and then drop off so quickly and so completely? And what do you need to do to be that level of player consistently, the first kind? Yeah, um, I just need to stay the course, uh, keep getting better every day, keep working on my craft. And, you know, whenever the team uh, calls on my number, I just need to answer, uh, just need to make the play for them. Um, as regards to, to the drop-off, um, there's only one, one ball to go around, so I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. But when my time comes again, I'll be ready. Was it disappointing that things didn't continue the way they were going there for a month or six weeks? Of course, it's disappointing. You want to do everything you can to help your team, and um, I wish I was able to do that. Thank you. Zach and then Dave. Hey, Trav, it's good to talk to you again. It, it wasn't just a matter of, of one ball going around. Your playing time significantly decreased as well. Was there any indication from the coaching staff of, of why that happened? Um, not really. Some guys got healthy, and, and – um, that's just kind of how the way it goes. Um, 
if they need me to uh if they need me out there i'll be out there but um yeah kind of just how the business goes how do you feel your performance on the field and your practice habits were during that period um i, I think they're pretty good i mean for me for me and myself um i don't change i like to uh st i stay myself at, at all times um i'm always working as hard as i can staying out to practice trying to get better so yeah um Stayed the course. Dave and then Bo. Hey, Travis. Um, what do you think you need to do to, to get back to being a productive player again? I'm still here. I'm still ready to be a productive player. If they call my number and they want me to fill that role, I'm ready. Do you have to do it? I mean, is, is what do you have to do, though? I mean, is, do you do the same thing and, and hope that the results change? Um. Can you ask that again? I'm asking what you have to do personally to, to find better results. I mean, is it is it a matter of hoping that what you're doing will eventually start to pay off, or is it altering what you're doing? Um, I'll, I'll go back to the drawing board and try and, get, try and get better, figure out what stuff didn't work and what did. But, um, yeah, like I said, I'm ready for when, whenever they call my number. So, um, yeah. Go ahead, Bo, and then Ed. Travis, I know that this is along the lines of the, the same questions, but, um, you know, you went from, like, the leading receiver in the league for, for a four-game stretch to your playing time um, just sort of disappearing a little bit. Was it, was it confusing to you at all beyond, like, uh, you know, this being the business and other guys are going to play? Was, uh, were, were you surprised that, that you weren't on the field as much? Um, not really surprised, but I just need I just need to control what I control. That's something that's out of my hands, and um, it's not going to affect the way I work and uh, approach the game every day. Go ahead, Ed. Yeah, hi, Travis. Um, a lot of your success came obviously with Carson at the quarterback spot. I'm just curious what what has he been like behind the scenes here, Carson? And um, you know, is he still engaged with you guys and still helping you through things? What, what's he been like? Yeah, absolutely. Carson has handled this pretty well. Um, he's still engaging with players. Still, if we mess up, he'll come to us, uh, coach us up. And he's always had great energy out there on the practice field. Is it the same as it was? I'm sorry if I could just follow up. Is it the same as it was, uh, you know, prior to, you know, him getting put on the bench for Jalen? Is it still that similar level or is it a little lower? No, it's not less at all. I, he might even picked it up for a real. Um He's always a great leader on this team, and we, we look for him to uh, to get us going. Thank you. Go ahead, Les, and then Martin. Hey, sorry to belabor this again, but uh, so one thing that happened when you, there were a few games there uh, when you were playing a lot, uh, getting a lot of snaps, but you weren't being targeted, and there was talk that, well, he's really good against zones, but he doesn't get open as much against man. Do you see that? Is that something that you're working on, or is that just totally uh, not – the case yeah that's not the case at all okay i see two more hands so we'll finish up with martin and then zach hey uh travis um you you were teammates in college with taylor heineke is that is that correct and can you kind of give like a scouting report uh that's the odu legend i, I can't say anything bad about him um that's the goat over there we have nothing but respect for that guy he's the reason I went to Old Dominion and, um, well, he's the reason a lot of people went to Old Dominion and uh, I have nothing but great things to say about him. I mean, obviously he, he got in the last game and everything. I mean, how, you know, if he should be the starter and everything, you know, for a game to make the playoffs, I mean, how, how happy are you for him? And, you know. I, I, I'm ecstatic for him. Um, he's definitely had a, a long journey to get to this point, but he's a baller and I know he's ready to uh, make some plays, but hopefully not enough. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Go ahead, Zach. Hey, Travis. It's 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 been a few. You know, you you you've kind of tried to find your spot here in the NFL during these past two years. As you go forward into the off season, are you confident you're a part of the Eagles' plans going forward? Uh, yes. I mean, we haven't talked anything about that, but um, I would like to think I am. Um, but once again, I just have to control what I can, can control, just bring the same attitude every day and uh, hope for the best. Thank you. Rube, we'll squeeze you in here. Thanks, Allie. Um, 
did you feel like you had um, any any part? I mean, there were some drops there during that stretch when when your production was down. I mean, did you feel like you could have played better during that during that stretch? Absolutely. Even when I had 150 yards, I felt like I could have played a little better. Um, as a receiver, nothing's ever going to be perfect, but um, just got to go out there and make it your best.